three D cell culture models may be generally classified into two principal categories based on method. Scaffold-based methods using hydrogels or structural scaffolds and scaffold-free approaches using freely floating cell aggregates, typically referred to as spheroids. The choice of method is determined primarily by the nature of the cells themselves, but also by the goals and purpose of the 3D culture. Each type of 3D cell culture has its own set of benefits and drawbacks. Scaffolds are useful supports for 3D cell culture. They facilitate oxygen, nutrient, and waste transportation due to their porosity. As a result, cells can proliferate and migrate within the scaffold web before adhering to it. As they grow, the maturing cells interact with one another and eventually form structures that are similar to the tissues from which they originated. Most of the time, those aggregates are presented as heterogeneous sized spheres known as spheroids. This is the cell structure commonly used for drug screening and any other 3D cell culture application. Scaffolded 3D cell cultures usually have a larger surface area and are generally larger than those that do not. The scaffolds are laid out to replicate the structure, macro, micro, and nanoscale and function of the tissue of interest. The larger and more complicated a scaffold, however, the more difficult it is to extract for analysis. To avoid any hindrances, the scaffold handled must provide cell growth support and biocompatibility features, regardless of type. Scaffolds that are currently manufactured are membranes, matrices, and, most notably, hydrogels with excellent properties. Metals, glasses, and ceramics can all be utilized as scaffolds, but polymers, whether synthetic or natural, are preferred because they are easier to regulate in terms of chemical and structural surface qualities. It is of note that tissue engineering scaffolds differ from those used in 3D cell cultures in that they have unique properties such as biodegradability and support for tissue regeneration applications. Hydrogels are polymer networks extensively swollen with water. Cells can be embedded in these hydrogels or simply coated at the surface. Gels with good mechanical properties are among the most commonly used scaffolds because they have tissue-like stiffness and, to some extent, perfectly mimic the extracellular matrix ACM. This extracellular matrix substitute contains a significant amount of water as well as natural biomolecules such as alginate, gelatin, hyaluronic acid, agarose, laminin, collagen, or fibrin. The gelling mechanism used to solidify a gel precursor, however, can be difficult to prepare and manipulate at times. Depending on the nature of the polymer, hydrogels can be classified into different categories, ECM protein-based hydrogels, natural hydrogels, and synthetic hydrogels, with distinct properties. The scope of which is not within what is intended for this course. For polymeric hard material-based scaffolds, Cells are cultivated in presence of fibers or sponge-like structures. Cell recover a more physiological shape because they are not plated on a flat surface. Materials used for these supports can be polystyrene, adapted for imaging studies because of its transparency, but also biodegradable tools like polycaprolactum. These polymers are preferentially employed since they produce monomers that are easily removed by the natural physiological pathway when implanted. Porous metallic scaffolds, on the other hand, made primarily of titanium and tantalum, have been designed because metals have high compressive strengths and, more importantly, excellent fatigue resistance. Lastly, composites are also used to build scaffolds. They are made of two or more distinctly different materials. Ceramics, combined with polymers for instance, developed to take advantages of both materials' properties to meet mechanical and physiological requirements.